Hello, this is Denton Yoder, instructor for BSC 2304, the Biological Systems Engineering CAD class. Um, I wanted to show you today a command that most people have ignored and that I really think should be called out for some of the cute things you can do with it. Plus, I'll show a little list routine that I just wrote um, to utilize this command. The command's name is Wipeout. So, uh, what I'm going to talk about is I'm just going to call up a drawing. Well, actually, I just draw a couple lines on the screen. And uh, it's just going to be a mess. Well, what I'm going to do is I want to create a, a blank space. So, I'm going to do a rectangle in the middle of this mess. And I'm going to do the command Wipeout. And Wipeout has a polyline option which will let me pick this polyline I just drew. And it says, do you want to erase this polyline? I'm going to say yes. And what it did is it erased the polyline and left what's called a wipeout. And I can also do the command wipeout F for frames off. And what I did is I put a piece of black in my drawing. Now, if I were to draw over top of this, Let me turn my snaps off so I quit snapping. I can draw on top of that black if I want to. Let me start that arc back farther. So I have a piece of black on the screen and objects are either above the black or below the black. And I can pick an object right click and get a context sensitive menu and I can draw order bring to the or send to the back and now it's underneath that black or I can grab it again draw order bring to the front uh, another line that's behind it right now I could also take it and draw order bring to the front or I can take any object I want and draw order send to the back so I can put things in front of or behind the black the black is really hard to pick I could do a crossing box and get it but it's hard to see you can't really well it lets you pick it but it's not really easy to see to click uh, so you, what you can do is if you want to uh, wipe out F for frames on and then you can see it. If you can click it, you can actually change it. Make it bigger, make it smaller, uh, do things with it. Now, um, the command I wanted to show you or the, the toy I'm going to make is I drew a block. Uh, it's called a clevis. And if I insert clevis top, it is, um, it typically goes on a pin. You give it a scale, I'm gonna leave it at one, and you rotate it an angle. And what you'll see is I drew a wipeout underneath this clevis, so that even if you turn the frames off, wipe out frames off you still see the clevis because the wipeout is on the edge of it but underneath so anything I draw this clevis on gets covered up by the clevis because it has a wipeout in it uh, this is really handy for symbols like uh, even an iron pin you want to show two circles as an iron pin on your drawing but survey lines underneath that pin should not be broken but I can snap that pin right on the end of a line and it's going to trim out anything that's inside the circle automatically because it's a wipeout. Uh, I've also done it for doorways or windows so if I have a hatch for a wall I can just drop a door or a window on it and it'll it'll hide whatever's behind it and put it in. I've used it for pickets on a, on a deck so I can show the pickets on the deck and the siding that are behind the pickets or anything behind the pickets get hidden automatically. So I just combine the clevis command or the clevis block with a program. 
what my program does is it asks you to, to pick a point, a starting point for the clevis rod. Uh, it's going to get a point, store it as point one. And then it's going to say, do you want to place it by the top or the side? And I'm kind of trying to follow the AutoCAD notation where the default is side, but if you type T, it'll give you top. Um, and then where do you want the end of the rod to be? Point two. And then the, the object is going to be object two. Uh, once you've picked these locations, I'm turning the object snaps off, but I'm storing what the old object snap setting was so at the bottom of the program I can restore the settings. <coughs> Excuse me. So now at point one, I'm going to insert a clevis top view or a clevis side view one or the other. I'm using the minus insert so I don't get a picture menu, I get a dialog or I don't get a dialog box, it just goes to the command line. I'm changing the string case of the text the person typed in to uppercase so I only have to check for a capital T instead of a capital or a lower. And my if then else statement is basically saying if this what they typed is a T. If they typed a T, insert a top view. And the very next line is the else. If they did not type a T, put in a side view. It's going to be inserted at point one, which is where they picked. It's going to be scaled of one for the X and Y direction. And then the angle is going to be the angle from point one to point two, or the angle they're placing the clevis rod in at. But there's a problem. The angle command returns the answer in radians. So this will be a radians angle. And I can very quickly multiply by 180 and divide by pi, and that'll make it degrees. So I'm inserting a clevis at the angle that they've selected. Um, and I'm either doing a top or a side view depending on what they whether they typed a T or not. Then at the end of the clevis, the second end, it's going to do the exact same thing. You can put a top or side view of a clevis at the other end, and the angle is going from point two to back towards point one and convert it to degrees. Okay, then I'm going to move in and artificially create a point three and a point four. My clevis is exactly 12 inches long from where the shaft starts from the insertion point. So point three is going to travel in polar from point one, following the angle of point one to point two, 12 inches. Point four is going to travel back from point two towards point one, 12 inches. So point three and point four are located 12 inches from the points you picked. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm drawing a polyline and I'm going to draw a two inch shaft and turn it into a wipeout. So point three and point four are kind of the center of where this two inch shaft is going to be. So I need to move one inch up and one inch down. So I'm going to start off polar from point three minus the angle from point three to four, subtract from that pi over two, which is 90 degrees. So subtract 90 degrees and go one inch. And then I'm going to go to point four and subtract 90 degrees and go one inch. Then I'm going to go from point four plus 90 degrees one inch, and then back to point three plus 90 degrees one inch, and then C for close. That'll draw a rectangle for the shaft that holds these two clevises together. 
Then I'm going to do the wipeout command, which will turn that polyline wipeout polyline. L is a shortcut to pick the last object drawn, which would be what I just drew. And yes, turn it into a wipeout. Then lastly, I just copied that code down and it's going to draw another polyline on top of it. So if the frames are turned off, you'll still be able to see the shaft. Then turn the snaps back on. Okay, to run this, um, well, loading a program is parenthesis load and the name in quotes, load clevis, and it should return with C colon clevis because learned a new command and its name is clevis. So now if I type in clevis, starting point for the clevis rod, um, top or side, I'm just going to hit enter for side. Ending point of the clevis rod. Uh, I'm going to do T for top. So what I got was a side view of a clevis. The rod connecting them and a top view of a clevis. Now I can do it again. Just hit enter to repeat the command. Pick a start point. T for top. Pick an end point. T for top and it draws top to top. Hit enter again, put it down here. I'm just gonna hit enter to get a side, up to here, enter to get a side, and I got a side view of a clevis. How are we doing? So what I did was made, um, okay, let me say where this thing came, comes from. Um, there's a company down in Bland um, named Pascor Atlantic. They were, were a division of AB and B, or ABB, um, and they do um, switches on power lines. And these clevis rods will tie segments of, together. So, for example, if you have three power lines and you want them all switched at the same time, you could tie all three. Uh, connecting rods or you can tie all three switches together with connecting rods or clevis rods and uh, actuate all of them at the same time. Okay, so that was it. Hope it was fun. If you think of something you want to draw, you can make your work a lot faster. Um, with this company, Pascor Atlantic, I was able to take a process that took them four hours to draw by hand and reduce it to less than five minutes. Thanks.